Okay, okay, I give in. We're finally going to do this video. But we're doing it technically, we're doing it scientifically. We're not leaning into the plot armor. We're not going to try to appease both sides of the audience. And we're not going to come up with some namby-pamby way of them teaming up or tying or whatever the case may be. We're, we're doing this properly. So fine, we'll do it. But we're doing it my way. Hey everyone, welcome back to Intersection Zero Zero, and today we're going to objectively look at one of the most popular formats of game videos out there, and the one that I've been asked to do literally hundreds of times over the five years I've been making YouTube videos. So, today I'm finally giving in and doing a video on who would win in a fight between the only two hyperlethal vectors in the Halo universe, the Master Chief and Noble Six. But we're going to be doing this with a difference. First and foremost, I've seen tons of videos about this whole who'd win in a fight between Chief and whoever malarkey. I've even made one myself a good long while ago, which many agreed with and many disagreed with, but I'm completely throwing out that format and revisiting it anew. The problem I always see with these kinds of videos where opponents are pitted against each other is that either mitigating circumstances either aren't taken into account, or outlandish circumstances, access to requirement is used to justify a tie or even a team up between the two parties to avoid upsetting one or the other side of the supporters. We are not doing that here. I'm not going to pansy out and say that they'd end up working together, or they'd walk off arm in arm into the sunset, or that they'd fight to a stalemate, or that it would never even happen. If we're going to do this, we're going to do it properly. Now, that's relatively easy and straightforward for two characters from the same universe, such as the case of Chief and Noble Six. It's a little bit more complex when we eventually get to the point of doing these videos on two opponents who don't exist in the same universe, but we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. And in the meantime, throw a comment down below on what characters you want me to do a video on next, either against the Chief or at least one character from Halo against another from, well, wherever. Highest liked comment gets priority, so keep an eye on the comments and vote up ones that you like. So let's really quickly just skim over and summarize what I'm trying to get at here. I'm seeing this through properly and assuming a circumstance where there is no choice, no external factors, and nothing that could effectively result in a draw or a stalemate or where they team up against another threat or whatever other nonsense. This is literally just a one-on-one -on -one fight whereby the victor must kill the opponent. We'll grade the results based on hand-to-hand -hand combat for round one without armor, the same again with their respective characteristic armor for round two, and then their signature weapon sets for a third round. We'll reference the lore, we'll deal with cold hard facts, and I'm throwing out this whole chief's plot armor being lucky. It just, it's not going to apply. It doesn't apply here. So, with all that said, let's get on with it. First round would be a straight up, hand to hand combat fight. Both Spartans have been given the rating of hyper lethal vectors, which doesn't make a huge amount of sense within the law, but we'll go with it, and are forced to engage each other in a similar manner to Chief and Locke's fight in Halo 5, except in this case, they're genuinely going to battle to the death. They're not just trying to, you know, avoid hurting the other one or whatever the case may be. And bear in mind they're doing this without armor in round one, relying solely on their augmentations and skills. Now the lore on this is quite straightforward. Chief is six foot ten out of armor, while Noble Six is at least billed as six foot nine. However, this figure is based on his armored height. As we can tell, there is around seven inches of height difference between him and George052, who is known to be seven foot four in his armor. If six foot nine were his out of armor height, the armor adds four inches, and there is definitely more than three inches between George and six. This means that out of armor, Noble Six is actually only six foot five. He's only 0.5 of an inch taller than me. That's 
Wow. Anyway, that means that Chief has 5 inches on Noble 6, which ultimately increases his reach and his leverage, as well as adding a very modest mechanical advantage based on the lever point of his limbs and where the muscles connect. Chief also outweighs Noble 6 by 47.6 pounds, or 21.5 kilograms, with Chief sitting at 286.6 pounds, and 6 at 239 pounds. So again, both his height and weight work to his advantage against 6, but as we know from the tales of David and Goliath, this isn't the is-all and end-all of the story. Chief is a Spartan too, this means he is already genetically the absolute peak of humanity and is superior to most by a notable margin. Noble Six is suspected but never explicitly confirmed as being a Cat 2 Spartan 3. Now a Cat 2 basically means that they meet the same extremely strict genetic markers that the 2s had to meet to be approved for the program, so in this regard Six and Chief are both the absolute peak of humanity, genetically speaking, before we even get started. Chief received Project Aster, the Spartan 2 augmentation sets, and is suspected to have received several updated tune-up augmentations on top, but again, based upon some of his characteristics matching up with some of those parameters of the updated orgs, but it is also never explicitly stated. Project Aster included a thyroid implant that boosted his height and growth factors, a carbidesramic ossification grafting carbidesramic armour onto his bones to make them nearly unbreakable, muscular enhancement injections that made him capable of lifting three times his body weight at the age of 14, only months after augmentation, or that translates to approximately about 859.8 pounds or 390 kilograms, that's 390 kilograms at the age of 14, months after the most extreme surgery you can imagine, and this also means that over the years his strength has increased proportionally. He received an occipital capillary reversal which boosted his visual acuity, colour, contrast and night vision, and a superfibrification of his neural dendrites giving him a 300% boost in reaction times, and markedly more in times of stress when his adrenaline is pulsing. On top of this, he received numerous genetic therapies and cybernetic enhancements to his organs. Six received Project Chrysanthemum the Spartan 3's augmentation sets, which were a catalytic chemical cocktail that included a carbidesramic ossification catalyst, which makes his bones nearly unbreakable over time, because this augmentation is a catalyst, thus it catalyzes and leads to the eventuality, rather than just giving it straight away at the offset. A fibroid muscular protein complex, which is seemingly very similar, if not identical, to the Spartan 2's and Grant 6, and I quote, the strength of three normal soldiers. This is a very vague term, however the average soldier is expected to lift 50 kilograms unassisted, so this direct quote should mean that he should be able to lift 150 kilograms, but that's ridiculously low for a Spartan 3. So assuming the muscle augmentation is very similar to that of the 2s, this should in theory grant 6 the ability to lift 3 times his body weight which we know from earlier is 239 pounds, giving him the ability to lift 717 pounds or 325 kilograms. A retinal inversion stabiliser which grants superior vision, but through altering the eyes rather than the occipital capillaries that feed into the vision centres of the brain, and a colloidal neural disunification drug which boosts reaction time by 300%, so on paper the augmentations are very similar. However, Chief does have the ability to lift 142.8 pounds, or 65 kilograms more. So in height, weight and strength categories, Chief is dominating 6. He is 6.2% taller, 18.1% heavier and 18.1% stronger. They match in reaction time and are approximately the same for their visual acuity. Training is much more complicated to substantiate. Six was nine years old when he was recruited into the Spartan 3 program. He was born in 2530 and was inducted into the Spartan program for Beta Company circa 2539, whereby Chief was six years old when he was conscripted. Six graduated from training into active service in 2545. After six years of training, while Chief graduated in 2525 
at the age of 14 after eight years of training. So Chief has two extra years of intense training than six. However, it should be noted that many people claim the Spartan 3's training was more intense than the Spartan 2's due to the fact that they were being trained by a Spartan 2, Kurt 051, and studied the Spartan 2's extensively. However, past the planning phase of each subsequent class for training, Kurt's involvement was much more administrative, as he was the officer in charge of the camp. So the actual training process itself was mainly headed by Senior Chief Franklin Mendez and his subordinate training officers. It wasn't until Gamma Company that subsequent Spartan 3s were trained directly by previously graduated Spartan 3s. So in this regard, Six and Chief were technically both trained by the same man with similar techniques. However, Chief was trained for two extra years, while Six had the gift of hindsight in being able to study and learn from the Spartan successes and failures in the field, which will aid Six to some degree. The final consideration to be made is at what age or developmental point we wish to draw a comparison for the fight. I make the argument that fresh after augmentation for both Spartans would be unfair, because they had likely not yet had the opportunity to acclimate to their augmentations. So they have to be an arbitrary age after this to draw a more fair comparison. However, choosing a random year such as 2552 would make Six 22 years old and Chief 41 years old, giving Chief nearly two decades more field experience than Six. And we won't take into account the amount of wear and tear on the body because Spartans just don't age like normal humans. Although Chief is 41 at this point, he's literally still in his 20s, biologically speaking. So while we could take the average of the difference between their ages, we also know that Six didn't live past 22 years old. So it's only fair that we judge the Chief by the same field experience. So Chief, as he was in 2533, at the age of 22. So now both Spartans are 22. Now there is some scant lore on what Chief was doing at this time and what he was capable of, so that helps increase the confidence of my assumptions. Now that all of this has been taken into consideration, we can make some decisions on this first close quarters engagement, and I think it's fair to say, based on the metrics that we've outlined here, that Chief has an obvious advantage, and would more than likely win this first fight. He has a clear height advantage, a clear weight advantage, He's been trained for two extra years. He's acclimated to his augmentations much better. Yes, Six has got the gift of hindsight in being able to study the Spartan 2s. Yes, apparently the Spartan 3s have a slightly more intense training experience than the Spartan 2s did. But on the whole, when you really weigh it up, it's fair to say Chief has won this one. So that's 1-0 to the Chief. Next up, a straight up hand-to-hand -hand fight in their respective iconic armour. So Six will be wearing the Mjolnir Mark 5B armor, and Chief will be wearing his Mjolnir Mark 6 armor. Now, there is an issue right there that's quite clear. The Mark 5 and the Mark 5B variants have a reactive metal liquid crystal layer that doubles the wearer's unarmored strength. The Mark 6, however, has an optimized version that grants the wearer five times their unarmored strength. Alongside this, both suits force multiplying circuits and reactive circuits enhance the wearer's reaction times and ability to perform hand-to-hand -hand combat to approximately the same degree, and the energy shields of the Mark 5B are notably weaker and slower at recharge than the Mark 6. So on that basis alone, it would have been a clear win for the Chief, but that's not a fair fight as far as I'm concerned. So we're going to downgrade Chief's suit to the Mark 5 to match the same generation as 6's. Now, in this regard, Chief's previously covered advantages from round one are amplified by Mjolnir, leading to a closer but clear win on Chief's part once again. This is also ignoring the AI interface that is present in Chief's Mark V and Mark VI armor that is completely and utterly absent in Six's Mark V-B. If we added this to the equation, Six becomes paste on the bottom of Chief's boots, so we'll politely gloss over that as an unfair advantage. The only other stipulation that I could argue, or would argue, could be levied if Chief and Six maintain the exact same parameters as we established in the previous fight, meaning both Spartans are wearing the armour when they were 22, Chief would be wearing the Mark IV 
and Noble 6 wearing the Mark 5B, in which case 6 is now in prime position to be able to take the Chief due to the Mark 5B's energy shield and reaction time boost, whereby Chief's Mark 4 would have no shields and only a modest reaction time boost when compared to the Mark 5B. Again, not particularly a fair fight. That being said, we also can't discount the possibility that Chief may still actually be strong enough to take Noble 6 in his armour, while Chief actually isn't even wearing a suit. We have an actual example of this immediately following the augmentation when Chief and the other Spartans fought against their drill instructors. The Spartans were wearing nothing but form-fitting black bodysuits and the instructors were wearing Mark I exoskeleton prototypes and saw Chief being able to kick the nearly half-ton suit several meters, punch large dents into the chest plate and almost literally disassemble the suits with his incredible speed and power. The problem here is that we're looking to make this fight fair, as close as possible to do so, so again this particular parameter likely shouldn't apply. Nevertheless, in these three examples, Chief wins two of the three, and as I said, the one I'd most be comfortable to go with is the fair fight where Six is wearing his Mark 5B, Chief is wearing his Mark V. That's as close of a match as we can possibly get, so in that regard, again, Chief's previous advantages are amplified somewhat, again playing into Chief's hand. So with all that said, that would seem to indicate that Chief would win this particular matchup as well, so that's 2-0 to the Chief. And finally, their signature weapon sets. Now, Chief is best known, and most often seen, wielding the MA-5C assault rifle and the M6G2 Magnum. Now, the MA-5C fires the 7.62 by 51 mm full metal jacket armor piercing round from a 32 round mag, and the M6G2 fires the 12.7 by 40 mm M225 semi armor piercing high explosive 50 caliber round from an 8 round magazine. Noble 6 is often seen wielding the MA37 assault rifle and the M6G Magnum, which fires the same caliber of rounds as the Chief's weapons and with the same ammo capacity. So in this regard, with both weapons being exactly the same type of ammo, capacity, muscle velocity and the like, the fight isn't influenced by the weapons themselves but by the skill of the operator and the armor's tolerance to punishment. Now on the armor side of things, again, in this matchup, assuming Chief is wearing the same generation of armor as Six, he's wearing the Mark V and Six is wearing the Mark V-B. These are extremely closely matched armor systems. The only caveat to this is that the Mark V-B was the first fielded Mjolnir armor with energy shields, and it is possible the shields of the Mark V variant worn by Chief has had some marginal improvements to the shields, making them slightly stronger. But there is, again, no direct references to this, just comparative performance from in-game, so we won't lean into that too much. So, it falls, finally, to the proficiency of the shooter. And while both Six and Chief are very evenly matched in their shooting capability, accuracy, and handling, the only thing that swings in Chief's favour is that he has two extra years of training on his side and his adaptation to his augmentations may give him a slight advantage in speed dexterity and stability that would translate to more accuracy, faster reload times, and better handling of recoil. This one is very, very, very tight. But with these final remarks said, I have to give this final win to the Chief as well. So, 3 for 3, Chief would beat Noble 6. I've tried to be fair but also stick to the facts and only make ven very minimal assumptions where absolutely necessary in this regard. So with all that said, I think the argument can finally be put to bed in a straight one-to-one -one fight to the death with no ties or teaming up or any other excuses levied. Chief would win against Noble Six time and time again. The universe is full of cold, hard facts, and this is one of them. And I couldn't have said that any better myself. Stick your comments down below on who you want me to cover next, and until next time. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, consider smashing the like button and leave a comment below on what you'd like me to cover next. Big shout out to my patrons, Spartan10148, the Metarch of my installation, Falcon, Prophet Bear, Mikhail, Sophia, and Ashley, my dutiful monitors.
Darian, Scarab, Spartan0137, Anthony, Ghost, Aaron, Chris, Jacob, Sean, Element0, Somatic, Jordan J3, Dan, Mr. Keys, Directal, Gunslinger, Jacob, Bandmill, Echo, Evermore, Officer Cat, and Personal Devil, my diligent submonitors, my fleet of Strato Sentinels, and my loyal enforcers. And all the other patrons who have jumped aboard to support the channel, it means more to me than I can accurately put into words. Another shout out to my Tier 0 Transcendent YouTube members, Spartan137, Jacob, Schmitty, Talia, Fenrir and Born Stella, and all the other YouTube members keeping my installation running on that glorious vacuum energy. Shout out to John for, I don't fucking know. And if you want more of this kind of content, hit the subscribe button and the little bell icon so you don't miss any future videos, and consider jumping aboard yourself as a patron or YouTube member to keep the channel alive and kicking. Thanks again for watching. Take it easy, everyone, and find peace in the domain.